suggested, and they had to demolish the entire house. It was so bad. And today, the property sits vacant. And I'm not going to say who it was, but you know who it is. <laughs> they just would, they didn't get it. Yeah. Even when they consulted a professional one. Okay. Some people just get crazy ideas, you know? I, mean, I actually did a pool inspection. It was an indoor pool, and they had an outdoor pool. Okay, got to have both, you know? What the heck? And then, and then the architect said, well, you know what? Well, why don't we, if there's an indoor pool and there's an outdoor pool, why don't we just make an underground swimming tunnel so we can go from the outdoor pool to the indoor pool? That's, that's ordinary. Oh, it is. They have a glass barrier. And... Under, under the pool, there was a hole that went to the outside. Yeah. I was, I was actually privileged to inspect that house. I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't find any problems at that house with that pool because the architect actually had indoor uh, total uh, vapor barrier. No, not only that, it was split up, but he also had um, uh, conditioning, um, dehumidification. You know, he had all that going on. But I did have one problem with that house. What he had all these doors that went to the pool. Yeah. And the doors, when you looked into the pool, they're optical illusions. So when you looked at the door. You look like you're walking into the pool. But there was a door there. And I'll never forget this one house, this door. I, I was going to go into the pool. I hit the door. Bam! And I had these glasses, these little things that, that go on your nose. Went, shoved into my head. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> shoved into my head. Put a hole in my head. I'm bleeding. The house was negative? You know, I, I walk into the door, you know. And I'm bleeding, right? And I'm like, oh, this is, I'm, I'm a home inspector. We don't walk into glass, right? Well, I walked into glass. So I, I looking for a band. I found a band. I put a band in on, you know. And I'm doing the inspection. And then thinking, like, nothing's going on. Two, and my inspections take three to four hours. So two and a half hours later, I walk up. Bam! I do it again. <laughs> And it goes through my band, and now I'm like crying. I'm like, oh, I'm like, got tears coming out of my eyes. Oh, man, you know, it's bleeding again, you know, through the band aid. I go get another band aid covered up, you know. So and you're bumping into the glazing? Into the doors that lead to the pool. Okay. There's an optical illusion. I got you. And so then I'm like sitting and I'm typing my report, and I look at the guy, and he's like, he's, he's holding his head too, you know? Yeah. He's like holding his head, and I go ahead, because I walked into the glass door. <laughs> and then the realtor goes, I walked into that glass door four times. So all of us walked into this glass door. I went in twice, the realtor three or four times. And you know what the problem was? We kept closing the door. And we just left the damn thing open. And it was an optical illusion. Now, here's the funny part the house was 30 years old, and this was a bedroom. Don't you think the homeowner should have. He walked into the door too. There should have been a sign there, right? A sticker or an yeah. X or yeah. Uh... It was, it was <laughs> in my entire thirty years of being a home inspector. <laughs> it was the optical illusion that oh, be there. even the professional oh, wow. would miss. It was totally amazing, and I still have a scar in my head from that door. <laughs> <laughs> Good story. Yeah, that de- I'll probably cut that right. The uh, Dectron that uh, Jimmy was talking about is a a specialized piece of equipment designed for pool con- air conditioning only. It's not for a house or a factory or whatever. It's strictly for pools. Isn't there another company called Arizona? There's several. Yeah, there's, air, several. Is, there's one like yeah. Ari- Ari- is that, that might... I, I would say there's probably five or six nation, worldwide. And that's it, they're just Dectron for pools. Dectron is from Canada, and, and of course we have our own, and so on, but... Uh, it is extremely specialized. You know, we kind of been getting really off our topic, yeah, and, we have. and I think what you want to—I I think I, I want to get back to uh, what should people do with their insurance policies for flooding? Remember, we very was, good question. Well, we we started flooding yeah. and we got into for pools, ten or twelve dollars so. a month. Now you really have but you flood can't insurance. People, I had so many clients that thought they had it. And when they call the insurance company, say, no, you don't have it. In Detroit. You don't have flood insurance. You don't have it. No, no. no. You don't have the rider. Wait, wait, wait. There's a difference between flood insurance, mold insurance, backup insurance. Is that correct? 
Are they all different or the what's, same? What's backup? Yes. Sewer water backup. backup. Oh, water, oh, backup. water backup. backup. Oh, no. Water backup is not that's a flood, right? Yeah. You know, you, you only get flood insurance if you're in a floodplain. Water backup is what you get. And that's the rider you put on your policy. And a lot of people thought they had it and they didn't. Oh. And so, for example, like the largest insurance company in the country has about eight or ten different variations on that same policy. And unless you're smart enough to ask, do I have it, or the agent is good enough to say you must have it, you are suffering under the illusion that you have water insurance. backup insurance, and you don't. That you have no idea of the term water backup, because I don't. Right. And uh, it's on my note of things to do is call my insurance company because right. you know, two months ago we had the same storm. Oh, you had, had horrible storms. And and that was that was in Toledo. No, Detroit. no, that was oh, Detroit. That was right. Oh, Detroit. it was huge. And and I had three or four clients who says I can't make it today. My basement's four feet deep, and, and so on. Right. And then they said, I have no coverage. I mean, we just didn't have hey, coverage. Hey, so for. Twelve bucks a month. That's all. I think it's more than that. I have no idea, but I think well, that's what I was told. Was I'm not an agent, so I I, but it's not expensive. I'm going to put that in all my policies. I think when I get home, you have to. I'm going to call all of them because if yep. it's twelve bucks a month, that's ridiculous. If you not have, having something, if like you have that. a disaster, that's twenty, thirty thousand dollars. That's a, what, hundred forty bucks a year. Yeah. One flood is going to cost you. He just said it costs five grand just to. Clean it up. That not, don't include not to buy mention, replacing a new the piano, piano, right? Oh, yeah. And then, oh, yeah. and then the other thing is, it's not, it you also ask them how much, and it ranges from twenty five hundred to five thousand to ten thousand, and the best guys out there will give you thirty thousand in water backup, and it's still an expense. So, so you're the, looking for thirty thousand. You want. To get as much as you it, can. If you have a basement that you actually have things in. But if you got one of these old basements that they're not finished, it's different. Well, like me. Right? You know, I only need 5000 in backup because I only store stuff down there. You don't, have, you don't finish your basement? No. And I... But if you have a finished basement, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, I have absolutely. two double monitor computer systems oh, in my oh, office. Oh, wow. And the whole... My office is in my basement. So if the water gets up to the top step... You're shutting you, you. You're not going to the next inspection in the morning tomorrow. Yeah. Oh no way! You're done. Yeah. For a while, maybe for a, a week, while. maybe forever. <laughs> yeah. Because your whole system is on those computers. Yeah. Now we have off-site backup, so we wouldn't lose any data. We buy new computers, but, but the computer and the monitor. Yeah, but all, but all your all your blower doors, the printers. You keep your equipment down there too, or no, 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 no. Uh, that that's safe. But we just have our office. The furnace, the water heater, the sure. dryer, the washer. I mean, that's six or seven thousand dollars right there. Just that. Yeah. Not and, and then, and then, if you like had like any heirlooms down there that that you shouldn't have been down there, but you find out later they were, they're ruined, right? You're like pictures right. of Gone. kids and, and who knows weddings yeah, and whatever. Who, who yeah. knows what that's worth? But that's, yeah. that's so that's that's another issue. People got to be really, and you see the problem. Yes, it, it, they only would come once every few years. These water issues. Yeah. To, and now the weather patterns changing. It looks like it's hitting somewhere every year. It's getting a normal. You know, I I uh, think I think uh, what I want to also cover, and I think our listeners would like to know, if their basement does flood, obviously they can call the insurance company. They're going to refer out their best people. Right. And and I know that you're in the business, and I know how people in the business like. Don't want to like say bad things about other people in their same business, but what can you tell people to watch out for when they start calling dewatering companies or mold companies? Is there, is there something that you think they should ask for to make sure that who they hire, if they don't hire you, because someone in in in, in North Carolina is not going to call Jim no. Roby or Tom Jones. No. They got to look, so they're like thinking, well, how do I know I got the right guy? I mean, yeah, is there they, a couple yeah. tips you can give them? It's hard. Do you recommend like an organization or or experience years? I, I, mean, I would say that go on Angie's List and go on Better Business Bureau because you can't say across the board that the, that any one franchise is good or bad. There are good and bad franchises. Yeah. So I'm not going to plug one against the other against the other. 
it's really on a, on a local basis. Uh, uh, you have to check Better Business Bureau and Angie says. It's very difficult. But you, you have to actually do more because sometimes on Angie's list, there might be some crazy guy that doesn't like a person. Right. And there's a hundred guys he worked for, and they don't say anything good, but the crazy guy gets on there. So now all of a sudden you think he's a bad guy. So I agree with Angie's list. Um, I agree that you need to do more than Angie's list. The right. Better Business Bureau yeah. is probably a good one, too, because you can actually... Do you have to be a member of Better Business Bureau to get a material on people? No, or I don't believe so. It's free, right? I think you call, you can call... Angie's, you got to pay for, though, right? Right, you pay for Angie's list. You, you can call the Better Business Bureau for free, but we belong to the Better Business Bureau. You know, we belong to both. We have, what about a website? If you look at their website, I, you want to look for references? Or, like, what do you... Let, let's say I want to, I, I want to, you know, A, B, C, clean my basement, flood problem. I get on the internet, I go to the website. What am I looking for? What am I, experience, years, right. years and education. Years, experience, and educate, all of that. Um, the problem is when a disaster hits and, you know, thousands of people are affected. Everybody's gone. Everybody's, you're going to want to get the first guy that can come out. Yeah. yeah, you're just you're just going to get anybody. So what is really important uh, is normally the carpet should come out, the contents out, and uh, and the dry then the walls should be you know cut up too. So it's not rocket science. No, but it's also making sure the stuff is dry, and that's uh, when everybody's in a rush. They'll tend to take the equipment out sooner than they should have mm -hmm. because they got to get on to the next guy. All right. And so, how does Mr. Homeowner know that his stuff is wet or not? Or, you know, he doesn't unless he goes out and buys a moisture meter. However, now instead of paying $100 for that moisture meter or buying it from professional equipment and, buy, you know, paying the professional price, now you can go to Harbor Freight. You get the thirteen dollar moisture meter. Really? Oh yeah. So guess what? You run your butt over to Harbor Freight and you buy that thirteen dollar well, moisture usually meter. Usually you buy it right now and have it because when it floods you ain't got time to order it. So right. buy the thirteen dollar moisture meter. Yeah. And you know what else you should buy? A backup dehumidifier. You right. got the one that you have you should have one in the basement anyways. So when the guy leaves your house because you know he's going to another big dollar job because they're all insurance jobs, right? Right. You put two dehumidifiers on it and you continually, con not continually, but you continue the dehumidifying process yeah. after he leaves, well, right? And you should, and this just reiterates the fact that you should, every home should have a dehumidifier in the basement. Even, what, what is a harbor? Harbor freight? Yeah. That's a, uh, a very interesting company that uh, we have here in Cleveland, and I think they're nationwide. Um, they, uh, they sell cheap tools. Harbor Freight. And, and you go online at Harbor Freight, and, and you'll be amazed at the stuff you can buy. Yeah. Is, is that a, uh, the, the meter in particular, is that a surface? Uh, no, it's a pin meter. So it penetrates? It's a pin, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, so you can actually get down to the uh, uh, the underlay behind, right. behind the, uh, underneath the, the uh, carpet. Yeah. And so I have two. Dollars? You know, we, oh, we, oh, we, oh. Have a, we have a, we have the, the non-pin meter would go in and yeah, we do, do the readings. Yeah. But that's a, I'll never forget, I called Marco up to, to a house one time. I said, Marco. Oh, hey. Marco got a moisture problem with the whole wall. Whole, the whole house. The whole house. Every wall. Every exterior wall is wet. I said, but it doesn't seem wet. And he comes out and he says, what are you testing with? And I showed him the meter. He says, that's not a pin meter. And he said, and they're all, they're all uh, get set off with metal. And he said, that, I'll bet you there's metal face insulation <laughs> metal face no metal face drywall metal face drywall it was and you put but you put a pin meter in it's okay and it's okay so the you whole got house to, you know home inspectors that i'm glad you brought that up home inspectors they use a tramax surface moisture meter yeah. which is like 
a lower level. His meter is like eight hundred bucks. Okay, and I've seen his meter before. I forget the name. We're not going to plug right. plug any meters, but I should. I just plug Tramex. <laughs> well, the, tra the Tramex meter is like three hundred. They all use a Tramex, and it's a great. Honestly, it's it's the home inspector's best tool in his case. For surface, I use this very same meter. And you go down, but if your drywall has foil face. It's gonna read hot, eat, 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 eat. you know. You're like moisture, moisture. But then you have to think about it. So you take your meter, put on an interior wall. It's not they don't they don't use that interior walls. Use it outside walls. And you go up and down. It's the same. You're like no way. You know it. You go in the attic and you start looking. Move the insulation. There it is, foil faced. A lot of inspectors make that mistake. Yeah, it's strictly con conductivity. Yes, and there's yeah. not a lot of houses. And the, and the foil fools it. It was it was some brilliant NASA engineer's idea, right, to do that, and I, I we do see it, right? Not a lot. No, they got not, not a lot, lot. Right. but we do see it. We run out yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool stuff, <laughs> isn't it? Cool. I mean, when you look at the backs, it's like metal behind the right. wall. Yeah. yeah. We uh, I saw one. I had one this year. Um, Orangeville Heights. So let me ask you a question. When I showed up and told you that, you're like. Right. Like, like, what's that commercial like? Yeah. I could have had a V8, right? right. You, you already knew it. Because you, you've seen it before. It just... Hey, right. So I now have two meters in my case. <laughs> I have no. a pin meter and I have a surface, flat meter. surface meter. you got to have both. I mean... Jim, I have two pin meters because if it goes zonkers, I want to use another one to right. make sure... A backup. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're only, what, 150 bucks or whatever. But. The, no, the Tramex pin meters are probably the, the yellow one or the red yeah. one. I have, that, yellow, I have a yellow one. That's, I, that's, yeah. that's like 240 bucks or something. Is that what it is? And, they, and they, they, they like sell you like like replacement pins. I've never had to replace my pin. I don't know why they do that. I have. I had have, I have one. They both rusted. And, and, of course, then they couldn't see anything because the well, rust you, was... So I threw it away and bought another one, but yeah. I, I have no idea why. You know what? You know what I do? I usually dry those off, and I don't keep my my. I have like a lot of electronic equipment in my home inspection bag. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, sensitive to moisture. You know what? It's getting on at eight thirty. All right. Are, is there any last comments? We got to go to dinner. Yeah. Eight thirty. I agree. Let's get. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Um, well, let's do a couple last comments. Maybe you could, a couple last comments or paragraph on water insurance. And what the, what people should do when their, their house floods from back. First on, on water insurance, just check your prep policies and make sure you have sewer backup insurance. And then if you have a finished basement, try to find the insurance company that has the best possible water backup. And water backups are the key word? Yes. As yes. opposed to water sewer. coming in from a flooded That's not a covered cause. basement windows? That is not a covered cause. Oh, it's not. You don't get covered for that. No, that's strictly. Sure. Oh. Too bad. It's not a cover cause. That's what we had in Detroit. It has to come back oh, wow. up. Tom? It was, it was a car deep. I mean, right. it was no, no. You know, six feet deep, and it, of course, went through the windows. Tom, you, you have any last words? No. Not and then, but oh. I'll take in the immortal words of George Regal, Dr. George Regal yeah. up in Detroit at Healthy Homes, who taught me the business 20 years ago when in doubt, tear it out. When in doubt, tear, tear it out. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that how we're going to end this? and contaminated, just tear when it out. So we're, that, we're going to end it now, right? <laughs> when in doubt, tear, tear, it, tear it out. Hey, thank you for uh, watching. Um, we, you can get this on Jim Roby's website, Tom Jones's website, or my website. Um, we also have previous years of other, we, we had a lot of other uh, okay. discussions on mold and, and attics and ventilation and crawl space. And uh, it's, we're done. Yeah. Let's go have dinner. Right.